Nam da, Croiso. Welcome to the Planning Regulatory and Licensing Committee, 5pm 5, 5 Wednesday, 9th of October 2024. Please note that today's meeting may be recorded. This recording will be broadcast on the Authority's website and may be used for training purposes by the Democratic Services Department. All attendees will be view of the camera and may be attending. You are being consented to being filmed and the possibility use of those images and sound recordings being used as outlined above. Apologies for absence. Thank you. Oh, okay. Before, yeah, if, yeah, okay, thanks. We'll, yeah. Get to know it. just need to find it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we've had apologies for absence and Councillor Goldsworthy. Chair, uh, I have to, I'll give my apologies. I have to leave at quarter past six. Thank you. Declarations of interest. Members are reminded of their personal responsibility, responsibility to declare any personal and prejudicial interest in respect of matters contained in this agenda in accordance with the provisions of the Local Government and Finance Act 1992 relating to Council Tax, the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Members' Code of Conduct. Members are reminded that they must identify the item number and subject matter that their uh, interest relates to and signify the nature of their personal interest and where members withdraw from the meeting as a consequence of the dis disclosure of a pre prejudicial interest, they must notify the chair when they leave. Have we any declarations of interest? Thank you. We move on to the open session. And item three, P240058, 75 9th Avenue, Kalanacha, to the Tidville to consider a report of the Chief Executive. Thank you, Chair. At the Planning, Regulatory and Licensing Committee meeting held on the 11th of September, it was resolved not to accept the officer recommendation to conditionally approve the planning application. Members instead resolved that they wished the application to be refused on grounds relating to highway safety and the character of the area. Accordingly, two reasons for refusal as expressed by the members have been drafted up and are contained on page six of the committee report. It should be noted that since the committee meeting, members have drawn reference to the relevant LDP policies in relation to the respective reasons for refusal as set out on page six. Effectively, now there, there are two options for members uh, to take. They can either agree those reasons for refusal and refuse the application or revert back to the original recommendation. And um, before we move on to questions and comments, I just need to sort of outline the position in terms of potential costs to the authority if a decision is made against officer recommendation. Members need to be reasonably satisfied, uh, sorry, need to be satisfied that the reasons are reasonable and justified if they do agree with these reasons for refusal. 
because if the application is appealed and upheld and the inspector finds the reasons for, for refusal to be unreasonable, costs may be awarded against the local authority. Can we have questions first, please? No questions? Any comments? Comments? Can I have somebody to remove the report, please? Just to check first. Um, which recommendation you're actually moving, just so that everyone's actually clear what they're voting on. Yes, can you outline uh, it? Yeah, I mean, the, the, as Craig said, there are two options before members. Either you can go with the reasons for refusal, which you put forward last month, or you can go back to the office's previous recommendations, which are that it should be approved. What I need to understand fully is which one you're voting on. So although you've moved and seconded it, what have you actually moved and seconded? Chair, I, I think because we voted to go against officers' recommendations last time, I think we just need to vote on the fact that we are reiterating that we are voting against officer rec officers' recommendations today. It just makes it uh, clearer. Fine. So what you're actually voting on is that you're refusing the application for the two reasons as set out on page six. So we just voted for. You're voting to refuse the application for the two reasons set out on page six. So all those in favour of refusal need to vote yes. All those who aren't in favour of refusal would vote no. So... Yeah, we'll go through that bit first. Yeah, so. I don't know. Uh, so we'll go again. We'll just check. Yeah. So someone move the recommendation for refusal. Councillor Clive Jones. And I move. If someone can second that for refusal, second. So we'll vote on that the application be refused for those two reasons. So all those in favour of refusal need to vote yes. And we are there. Can, can, can I just check before we go any further? Who is actually the ward member for the Troy de Rue ward. I know it's Pendarren ward. Are you actually the ward member leader for at this moment? So you're still that, that's all I wanted to check because I, what I didn't want is for if it was Anna that was actually the ward member. But if, if it's still you, that's fine. Fine, so that's carried, the, the application's refused. Yes? Yeah, um, anybody from Pindaran who's sitting to you that judgment, uh, if you want to leave, you can. Okay. So they stay in, do they? Yeah. 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 They can leave at any time. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move on to item number four, P slash two four slash zero zero eight nine, Mount Pleasant Hotel, Mount Pleasant, Cardiff Road, Merthyr Vale, Merthyr Tidville, CF four eight four TD, to consider a report of the chief executive. Thank you, Chair. Uh, similar to the, the previous application, um, at the meeting held on the 11th of September 2024, it was resolved not to accept the officer's re recommendation to conditionally approve the plan application. It was instead resolved that they wished the application to be refused on grounds relating to highway safety and the unsustainable location of the application site. Accordingly, reasons for refusal of the application, as expressed by members, have been drafted and uh, included on page 16 for committee's consideration. It should be noted that since the committee meeting, members have drawn reference to the relevant LEP policies in relation to the respective reasons for refusal as set out above. Again, as, as with the previous item, there are now two options before members. They can either vote 
to refuse the application based on the two reasons for refusal included in the committee report, or they can revert back to the original recommendation. Again, I just have to highlight the position in terms of potential costs to the authority. Members need to be satisfied the reasons for refusal are reasonable and justified, because if the application is appealed and an appeal is upheld and the inspector finds the reasons for refusal to be unreasonable, costs may be awarded against the local authority. Any questions on this? Any comments? Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. I, uh, I'll go. Councillor Clive Jones first. Yes. Um, just seeking clarification, frankly, on whether this property has been purchased by, you know, private um, people. <coughs> Uh, and it, it's it, it, so. It, it, has anything changed since the last meeting? I'm unaware if the ownership of the property has changed uh, since the last meeting, um, but that's, that wouldn't be a consideration that we look at in this report. Again, provided all the correct procedures are followed as part of the application in terms of the correct certificates, the application hasn't been withdrawn and is therefore before you today. So we're still dealing with this in relation to the fact that. Um, the prospective um, developer, and, and he, he didn't sit here last time um, to, you know, promote the uh, advocacy of using the building. The seat was empty, so I presume that situation is exactly the same. Yep, the the report, the original report comes to the same recommendation as previously, but now you are you are deciding whether. You want to refuse the application based on the reasons for refusal that, that were determined at the last meeting. Can I ask Councillor Scott Thomas? He has probably further information on this. Yes, Chair, thank you. Um, I was going to raise this as a comment, just as a clarification. The property has now changed hands to a private owner. Um, and obviously there's no way now the D2, at the moment anyway, there's no way the D2 can purchase the property. So the planning approval is pointless. Um, I have liaised with the new owners, um, just obviously querying how they're settling in, settling in fine. Uh, a couple of teething issues, but it's expected with a new building, especially that size. Um, but yeah, um, it has changed hands and there are new owners in there. I'll answer your question, Clive. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Um, have we any further questions? Have we any comments? Okay. Um, as I as with the previous application, there are two options before committee. We okay. just need. I did have a comment. I just wanted to reiterate again in my comment that the property has been sold privately, and I just like to, on behalf of myself and, and my my ward colleague, just to welcome the new owners into the into Merthyrville ward. Thank you. So, sorry, Clive. Chair, yeah, I just find it bizarre that we are dealing with. Uh, an application before us where there's been a change of ownership of, of the property. Um, in all the years I've been on planning, I don't think I've ever come across a case like this. So if this application is refused, it will still be referred to the planning inspectorate, even though in the meantime, this property has been purchased by a, um, a private uh, owner. The, the applicant would still have that right of appeal. It's a comment, yeah, it's a comment. So I'll go back to Geraint to explain what we've okay. all done. As with the previous application, which you've just determined, there are two options before committee, either to refuse it for the two reasons that you decided upon last month, or to go with officers' recommendations. So what I need to ascertain from you first is which one you're voting for. And perhaps I could, perhaps someone could say which one way. Councillor Scott Thomas. Thank you. Uh, 
Chair, um, as with the previous report, I'd like to move that we refuse the uh, we go with the refusal based on the, the um, reasons that the councillors, the members made in the previous meeting. So you're moving the report, Scott? Moving to refuse. Have we got a second there? I'd second that, Chair. Yeah. Okay, so before you actually go to the vote, if you vote yes, it is to refuse the application. If you vote no, it's not to refuse the application. But they can now go to the vote chair. Yeah. Can we put it in the vote, please? Thank you very much. We'll go on to item 5P240093, land adjacent to 36 Hilton Terrace, Bedlin, Ogtree, Harris, to consider a report of the Chief Executive. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Uh, this application relates to a parcel of undeveloped land located within the settlement of Bedlinog. The site is located within the settlement boundary, situated between a terrace of residential properties and a school, bound to the front by a highway and to the rear by a lane. The site is covered with a variety of vegetation and slopes steeply from the front to the rear. Outline planning permission is sought for residential development of the site with all matters reserved. Indicative site layouts have been submitted, suggesting the possible position of four dwellings and the access. The drawings indicate that the proposed dwellings could be constructed as a terrace and sited to the southwest of the site where they would follow the front building line of the existing residential terrace. Access could be gained from the highway of Hilton Terrace located to the front of the site. The scale parameters provided state that the proposed terrace of dwellings would be between 9 metres and 11 metres in height, 29.5 metres in width and between 6 metres and 6.5 metres in depth, with a maximum depth at ground floor level of 9.5 metres to allow for parking to be incorporated under the garden level. As a result of the consultation exercise, six letters of objection were received. A summary of the main concerns has been set out in the report. The main concerns relate to highway safety, given the lack of parking availability and congestion in the area, the design of the dwellings and the impact on existing residents and the nearby school. A further 14-day publicity exercise was carried out from the 25th of September in relation to information submitted by the applicant that clarified the scale parameters. One response was received to this consultation, reiterating concerns raised in relation to the parking stroke highway safety that was submitted during the initial publicity exercise. Consideration has been given to the issue of highway safety, including parking. The engineering and highways manager has not raised any objection to this proposal. The local highway has the capacity to accommodate a residential development at this site. In terms of parking, the head of engineering and highways has noted that there would be an off-street parking requirement of one space per bedroom, up to a maximum of three spaces. As this application is for outline permission, this information is not known yet, but it is considered that the site could accommodate sufficient off-street parking to meet the needs of the proposed dwellings. Details regarding the layout of the proposed development and the appearance and scale of the buildings have been reserved for future consideration. However, an indicative site layout and an upper and lower scale range for the dwellings has been provided. It is considered that the site will be able to accommodate these dwellings in the positions identified and within the scale parameters provided, whilst also allowing for parking and external amenity space. The density would be similar to the existing pattern of development and the arrangement of the dwellings within the street scene. Consideration has also been given to the impact on existing residents and the nearby school. Given that this is an outline application, it is the principle of residential development that is being considered. It is considered that the application site can accommodate four dwellings, as indicated in the indicative drawings, up to the stated maximum scale limits, whilst not adversely impacting on the, uh, impacting on the amenities of the surrounding residents and other uses to an unacceptable degree. For the reasons set out in the report, it is recommended that the application be granted planning permission subject to the conditions outlined on pages 37 to 41. I'll just quickly run through some slides um, to sort of visualise the proposal. Um, that site there shows the site boundary with Hilton Terrace to the to the northwest and Berlin Old Primary School to the southeast. There's an aerial of the shot, uh, aerial shot of the site there. Uh, as you can see, it's sort of quite heavily vegetated at the moment. And with commercial street in, in front of it that's where it is indicated the access would be from we have an indicative site layout here showing a, a potential terrace of four dwellings fronting onto hilton terrace with off street parking at the front 
um, the northeastern section of the site to the rear of the dwellings has been retained um, as part of the ecological mitigation that's been proposed as part of the application. Um, the elevations here show potentially what the dwellings could look like. Again, just to highlight that it is an outline application, the exact nature of how the dwellings will look is reserved. Um, the next slide here shows sections of what, what the dwellings could look like. And I think even though the indicative designs that, that are on these slides now indicate a flat roof, the scale parameters would allow for a, a sort of regular pitched roof that I think um, in the report mentions that we would we would find acceptable in the, in the local context. Um, using an image looking at the site um, from, from Commercial Street, looking up past Hilton Terrace then to the north, you can see the vegetation on, on the front of the site that would need to be cleared. Uh, to develop develop this row of terrace dwellings. And then there's a view from the other side of the site, looking southwards down past the site, down past Bedlinog uh, Primary School. Right. Have we any questions or comments? I'll take questions first. Councillor Michelle Jones. Um, just a quick one. Obviously, the drawings they've just shown us, Craig. Um, though the, the the way that the houses look there, that's not in keeping with the housing that um, is generally um, houses of Bedlinog. Um, so is that like normally that is an issue for planners? Why is that different in this um, application? In this case, it's an outline application where the des exact design and scale and how how the dwellings will look. Would be dealt with at the reserve matter stage. What we've got is some parameters for the sort of height um, that the build and height, width, and depth that the buildings need to be between. Um, those parameters are large enough to allow a sort of a regular sort of traditional roof type design, um, even though the applicant has sort of retained the flat roof on the plans. There would be sufficient provision within the permission if it was granted as per the report. Um, when the reserve matters application comes in. To have um, to have the design of the dwellings, sort of to ensure that the design of the dwellings uh, keeps in with the local character. Right, but the the character of of the drones you've showed us are nothing like the valley houses that are generally in Bedlinog, so I would have thought that would generally have been an issue, but it's not, is it? I, I just an outline application. Like I said, the detailed design is reserved, but I think this that probably shows it best in terms of. The sufficient capacity within the scale parameters to allow what we would regard as an acceptable design, okay. design to come forward. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Brent, Brent. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Craig, can I just take you to the uh, quickly to the park in provision and high, highway safety? Um, perhaps I'm reading it wrong, or perhaps you explain it a little bit to me. But it says, in terms of parking, the Head of Engineering and Highways has noted that there would be an off-street parking requirement of one space per bedroom, up to a maximum of three. So if it's a three-bedroom house, that means each property would have to have three spaces. The parking standards that we have are maximums. They're not minimums, so we, we can accept less on those. But, but, it's, think... but it's saying in there. An off street parking requirement of one space per bedroom. Yeah, it depends on the size of the house, the number of bedrooms in the house, and that, that's a standard, but they are maximum, they're not minimum requirements. No, but no, but what it's saying is one space per bedroom. So if it's three bedrooms, you've got to have three spaces there, regardless that's if it's up to a maximum. That's how I'm reading it, I could be wrong. You don't have to have one space per bedroom. That's the maximum that we'd want. We, okay. we would we would seek that in line with the standards. I get that, but do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it, 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 it can read it a little bit. Yeah, I appreciate that with the standards. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Chair. Councillor Clive Jones. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I could you go back to the one where there's uh, all that vegetation? It's got to be cleared. Oh, it was the other one, wasn't it? That's a view from the front. Uh, 
that's it. Could you tell me what what is that building immediately behind? The sort of shed uh, type construct construction back here. Yeah, that, that of, of a property that's behind there. That's within is the that... school boundary. I believe ah, it's part of, yeah. Right. It's part of the school. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have we comments? Councillor Gillian Preston. Oh, good afternoon, Chair. I just want to uh, show my concerns for uh, where they're going to build. Uh, the traffic at the moment outside the school is horrendous. There is nowhere at all for anybody to park. So how are these lorries are going to go up that road? Uh, you can't get a PCSO to come and patrol uh, because there aren't any. Uh, it's very, very dangerous as it is. There's no pavement from Commercial Street to the school. And I just don't know how they're going to be able to build there. Was that a question or comment? Jim? Comment. Right. OK. Can I have somebody to move the report? Thank you. Somebody to second the report? Thank you. Uh, can we put it to the vote? <clears throat> Thank you very much. That, that is carried. Um, we now move on to item 6, P240159. <laughs> The Jays, 8A, The Grove, Merthyr Tidville, to consider a report to the Chief Executive. Thank you, Chair. This application relates to a large dwelling known as the Jays at 8A, The Grove. The property has a total of six bedrooms and is served by a large front driveway area which can currently accommodate three or four vehicles. Plan permission is sought to change the use of the property from a six-bedroom dwelling to a seven-bedroom residential care home. Externally, the works would include the erection of a conservatory and the widening of the driveway access and parking area via the removal of the raised planted bed in order to provide six parking spaces. Internally, the works would include reconfiguration of the layout to provide seven bedrooms, all of which would be served by en-suites, as well as a medicine room and a staff room. As a result of the consultation exercise, 12 objections were submitted. A summary of the main concerns has been set out in the report. The main concerns relate to its impact upon the character and makeup of the area, Type of tenants the development would accommodate, type of tenants, sorry, the development would accommodate, antisocial behaviour and crime, management of the care home, and pedestrian and highway safety, given the lack of parking availability and congestion in the area. The property is located within the settlement limits and is already utilised for residential purposes. As such, the principle of the development would be acceptable. Although the proposal relates to a residential care home business, it will be used for residential purposes. Indeed, the use of the property for up to six people receiving care would be classed as a C3 use and therefore not require planning permission. In terms of a conservatory extension of this scale and the internal reconfiguration, included, including the provision of additional bedroom, it should be noted that these works, when proposed on a residential property, could also be carried out without planning permission. Consideration has been given to the potential impact the residential care home may have on the amenities of the neighbouring properties. In this regard, the provision of a seven-bedroom care home would not be considered to be significantly more harmful, impactful sorry, than the existing six-bedroom residential property, and this has been discussed in more detail in the report. Consideration has also been given to the parking requirements of the development, the availability of parking in the surrounding area and along the highway, and how this may compare to its previous use as a six-bedroom property. In this regard, it is considered that the widening of the driveway to provide six parking spaces would adequately cater for its proposed use as a residential care home. Indeed, discussed, as discussed in more detail in the report, a traditional six-bedroom property could have a similar demand for the parking or even greater than the use of the site as a seven-bedroom residential care home. It's acknowledged that there are concerns with antisocial behaviour and the management of the property, but these are issues that would sit outside planning control. Such issues would normally be an issue for the police or environmental health to resolve, although in this case, as it is a care home being proposed, they would be required to register with Care Inspector Wales which would be the body that would have the responsibility for monitoring and assessing these, these type of uses. It should be noted that the type of tenants who occupy the care home would not be a planning consideration 
and has therefore not been considered in the assessment of the application. For the reasons set out in the report, it is recommended the application, subject to the conditions set out on pages 56 and 57, be granted planning permission. I'll just run through some slides quickly on uh, sort of help uh, councillors get an impression of the site. Uh, this site shows the site boundary. You can see the property there, known as the Jays, in the middle of the red line. Um, this aerial shot also shows, shows the property in the, in the context of the surrounding area. It is slightly set back uh, from, from the other properties on the Grove. This plan shows again shows the site boundary and shows the proposed parking provision that we have in front of us. Once the front wall is removed and, and, the, and the raised planting bed is removed, there'd be sufficient parking for six, uh, for six vehicles, four staff spaces, and two visitors. This plan shows the proposed ground floor with the internal alterations and the proposed extension. You can see the conservatory. Um, we have got my cursor highlighted there. This plan shows the proposed internal alterations upstairs, which which involves um, sort of reconfiguring to get seven, seven bedrooms with each with an ensuite. Um, this photograph shows the site from the front, from the grove. As you can see there, there, there is a large drive on the property. As part of the proposals, the wall to the left-hand side of the gate, so you can see there, would be removed, and the planting bed behind it would also be removed to improve the parking provision. This photo shows a view to the southwest down the grove as you look from from the road just outside the property. As you can see that the road does slope slope down there to the southwest. This viewpoint, this this photo is taken from the same viewpoint, but looking the other way up the grove, as you can see, as as the sort of road does rise up um, towards towards the top of the street. Uh, this this photo shows the pedestrian access at the back of the property. Um, where's my cursor gone? You can see the, the proposed extension involving the conservatory will be located off this elevation here, where you can see the patio doors. Just to highlight that there. And yeah, that's it. Donald. Yeah, on, on this application, now we do have um, a member of the public registered to speak on behalf of the objectors. Um, I believe, Mr. Snay, um, you, you've been sort of chosen as a representative um, on behalf of everyone who, who's objected <coughs> to this application. Um, you'll have a full five minutes to speak now, as, as it's on yourself. When you're getting close to the five minutes, we'll sort of just let you know that the time is close. Um, once you finish speaking, then um, members will be allowed to ask you questions uh, to clarify any issues relating to, to your representations. Ready? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, thank you very much for letting me address uh, this meeting. I'm here today uh, representing the concerns of all those who have registered objections uh, to this application. Okay, and I will repeat the fact that the Grove is a private residential area, calling the development residential because somebody lives there. It is not private residential. It's a business. Those people will not be staying there for free. They will be charged a large fee to be looked after. It's a business. As a group, we have a number of concerns, not least of which are the traffic and road safety issues due to the nature of the road at this point, the volume and speed of traffic along the Grove, which has necessitated the installation of one of those smiley face uh, signs uh, as a speed reminder uh, and that's at the junction of the Grove with the Walk uh, and King Edward Villas. The parking issues with staff and visitors and safety issues around vehicles entering and leaving driveways which are exacerbated by the lack of enforcement of parking restrictions and we feel in view of this that a site meeting is required uh, for the committee to fully appreciate these issues. Um, there is some new 
developments on there to me, which I have just been shown. Uh, but even the plans that they show for the parking of six spaces, it shows two banks of three. So the people who park in first still have to have people move their cars so as they can get out. So it isn't a vast improvement anyway. The issue of staff and visitors parking has been raised previously, and I was told that there was space for six vehicles. Uh, I prepared this before I had this information just now. OK, um, I'd be interested to know, are the parking spaces of regulatory size? South Wales parking regulations state that those parking bays must be 2.4 metres by 4.8 metres. And I'd be interested to know if that is what has been provided for. Parking at the rear of the premises is also uh, an option, as vehicles would be uh, not an option, as vehicles would be parked on the pavement. And there have been concerns in the past about traffic, traffic uh, entering and exiting Pendarren Road from Pendarren Park. Uh, and a planning application for a small parking area there for six cars was refused on that basis a number of years ago. And since that time, four houses have been built there and each of them have three cars. So any extra vehicles going to the rear or leaving the rear of that premises would again uh, be way above what was uh, refused some years ago. Uh, I was told today that a site meeting has been refused uh, by someone. Uh, but because there are so many issues to be considered and the complexities of the uh, area, um, I would request that we still have that site meeting. The photographs you have seen here today, which I didn't know were available, um, were taken from Google Street View. Google Street View photographs are taken from the roof of a car on the end of a pole. The camera's on the end of a pole. So the angle that it's taken at is totally different to the angle of view and line of sight you would have when you leave your driveway. The photos to be have of any accurate representation at all would have to be taken from the driver's seat of a car entering or leaving the driveways. Otherwise, they are totally useless. We are also surprised that this application seems to have the full backing of the planning department and the views of residents being poo-pooed when I look at their website and the comments of ex-staff are so poor regarding their attitude to their service users. I quote, profit before care and poor pay right, and you, conditions Stair. for workers. Mr. Stair, thank you. You've had your five minutes. Um, I'll now open it for questions from committee members. Um, to ask for questions to the uh, gentleman. Councillor Michelle Jones. Yeah, my question to you is, if this wasn't a residential care home and it was occupied by a family, who had quite a, num a large number of residents living there with a large number of cars, would that make any difference? Uh, it would be a private residence, so that would not be an issue. Uh, due to my mistiming my uh, presentation, what I didn't get to was the fact that, although it isn't considered in the planning application, I have been told that the uh, premises would be used for autistics and people with learning difficulty. Can, but you, can you just answer the question that was asked, please? There would be no objection. And the reason for that is this house 
is you going to be used supposedly for autistics and learning difficulty, but yep, with yep. no just, reference please, to planning. Please, please just answer. Mr. Snare, please answer the question. I did answer the question and I explained okay, my answer. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Um, yep, we now hand over uh, to the applicant who also has the same five minutes now to speak and, and put their case across. Um, again, we'll sort of raise our hands if, if you are coming close to the end of your time. Um, and then following that, members will be will be able to ask you questions on your representations as well. Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to speak in support of this application. My name's Siobhan Carey and I'm the Divisional Managing Director for Wales um, with Accomplish. We welcome your officer's comprehensive assessment of the application and recommendation of approval. Accomplish Group has been providing care and support to adults for over 30 years and currently support over a thousand adults in supported living and residential services. Um, these individuals, some of whom with mental health needs, autism, learning disabilities and acquired brain injuries. We have around 100 residential schemes across England and Wales and at February 2024, we were providing care for 671 adults within residential homes. Accomplish is a well-respected provider and we've worked successfully in Wales since 1988. Community engagement is an important consideration for us and we're always happy to maintain effective communication with local residents. It's been demonstrated that there's a need within the region um, for, for residential home and we're receiving the full support of local commissioners in helping us to meet the shortfall by developing homes in the area and bringing back people back to Merthyr. This will be our 46th residential home within Wales, and we're seeking to develop further services to help meet growing demands for adults who require specialist support to ensure that they receive better chances and opportunities to succeed. All accomplished homes within Wales are registered and inspected by Care Inspectorate for Wales, and they will monitor and inspect us to ensure that we are acting in accordance with regulation and current legislation. All of our homes within Wales are 100% compliant across with CIW across all of our services. The local authority are happy with the location of the Js and there is a demand for the service within this area. Social care or residential homes are designed and operated as a typical home within a community. They are not institutions designed to segregate individuals from their community. Our homes are of good quality and are supported by specialist teams trained specifically in the areas of need for the people that we hope will live at the home. Individuals being supported with access will be supported to access their community, such as shopping, leisure services, attend education and socialise both independently and with our support. Deliveries and access to local transport routes would therefore be similar to any family home of a similar size, notwithstanding staff shift systems. Staff will provide 24-hour support and supervision for adults within our homes and local facilities would be accessed by walking, cycling, work, vehicle or public transport in the same way as any other residents in the street would. Often people will receive support through the day from staff at the home and will be supported to access the local amenities. Risk assessments and support plans are used to ensure that individuals are safeguarded from harm and that we have considered any potential risks to the community. We aim to make every day extraordinary for the lives of the people that we support because we believe in the potential of every individual within our care. The property in question, the Jays, has a large off-road driveway that accommodates six cars. These six spaces will be used for staff and visitors and there would be no requirement for on-road parking. Overall, the proposal is supported by planning, policy and local authorities commissioning services. There are no grounds for objections in terms of location, residential amenity or highway considerations. A need has been identified which should be met by this provision by a well-respected um, residential care provider. We therefore respectfully ask councillors to accept their officers' recommendations and approve this application. Thank you. Yes, can I ask if councillors have any questions? 
Councillor Clive Jones. Well, Mr Chairman, before um, this continues, uh, reference has been made by uh, John Snare to a site visit. And I, together with my colleague, have been tracking this application for the last three months or more. Unfortunately, since that time, the constitution in the County Borough of Merthyr Tydfil Council has changed. And I'll quote from the first paragraph, <laughs> section 20.1.1, site visits by the committee. A site visit may be held if the Director of Neighbourhood Services, in consultation with the Chair of the relevant committees, considers it will assist members in reaching their decision. This would be, for example, where the impact of the proposed development is difficult to visualise from plans and supporting materials. Members should attend site visits organised by the Council where possible. Myself and other members of the Planning Committee in the past, uh, as democratically elected members, had the right to move to have a site meeting, providing it was seconded and it was agreed. That has now been taken out of the Planning Committee. And you've heard uh, what was said. S sorry, Clive. This isn't a question for the applicant, is it? No, no. but uh, but I, I, I had a chat with uh, Craig Watkins before the meeting, yeah. and I was advised you, that I could ask... Did you, once we've done the questions for, for the applicant? Sorry? Once we've done the questions for the applicant. Oh, oh fair enough. Fair enough. Sorry, have we got any questions for the applicant themselves? Clay. No, it's, it's an opportunity for elected members to ask ask the applicant questions on their representations. Well, first of all, um, uh, my first question uh, to accomplish is in relation to what is on their website. And I quote, and it says, what we do, we provide support for adults with mental health needs, learning disabilities, autism, acquired brain injuries. But if you members go to the report on page 45, um, towards the bottom half there, it says typical diagnosis in relation to mental health problems include psychosis, schizophrenia, and it goes on to mention anxiety and depression. I couldn't find anything on the website that refers to psychosis and schizophrenia. So could you advise myself and other members of the planning committee is that something that's missed off there or do you deal with people suffering from psychosis and schizophrenia yes we both so could i ask why you, I, I went through the website i couldn't see it anywhere else is there any reason why it's not on the website no so you would have to look at individual homes to see what their specialisms are. So it varies from home to home? Yeah. So what do you, through you, Chair, what you've, what it's <coughs> intimated in here, if this is approved at the J's 8A, the Grove, would be um, individuals suffering from psychosis and schizophrenia. Is that correct? Until we have referrals through from um, the commissioning partners, we wouldn't know. Um, we would go out and do assessments. So we, the individuals that would be living at the J's are not necessarily known to us at this moment in time. So from a residential point of view, we still don't know who the type of uh, individual would be going there. Is no. that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, let me see. Um, Can I ask a question? 
is, is to try, I need to get some context on Clive's question to the applicant, even if it's off the record. Are we supposed to take into consideration the people who are living in the care home and their conditions and their illnesses? Are we allowed yeah. to take that Just to quickly, what, what we're assessing in terms, in terms of planning is the impact of the use yeah. itself for a residential care home. We cannot control the precise nature of the individual's needs. I said it's just the impact of the use that we're assessing. Okay. Right. Um, I have another question, Jane. It's on uh, page 45. Um, it states, and I quote actual words, uh, risk, assess uh, risk assessments and support plans are used to ensure the person is safeguarded from harm and that we have considered any potential risks in the community. End of quote. Um, could uh, the representative from Accomplish um, confirm that uh, and give assurance uh, that the, as far as the community is concerned, i.e. there are a number of elderly residents living there and in, in close proximity, will they pre be protected if in any difficult circumstances that will arise? I mean, all I can say is that our risk assessments are, um, are robust. Um, we make sure that people um, are well looked after, that residents and, and the community are safe as, as they can be. I couldn't give an absolute guarantee, um, but that's no more than, you know, a member of the public getting injured from somebody that isn't known to, to residential services. But what I could say is that they um, they have support from a specialist team and we have a big clinical team um, that offer us um, support with our clinical and, and risk assessments for those individuals in our, in our care. And I... Incidents within the community are very minimal. Three dead in Southport isn't minimal in my book. Please, Mr. Uh, please do not shout out. Well, I wasn't allowed to ask. Um, now, I got some other questions which will apply, um, frankly, to the highways. Uh, sit, but there's nobody here from highways. So, frankly, this matter needs to be clarified in relation to the site visit because um, there will be questions. I can't question them here. There's nobody here. Are there any further questions of the applicant? Um, no. No. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Uh... Council Carter. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Just just to confirm, obviously, accomplish are registered with CIW. And also, with regards to staffing levels, if, depending on who is placed in the residential home, would the staffing levels vary to what was, was stated in the application, or will they remain the same? So in terms of the staffing levels for the J's, it would be a one to three core staffing ratio. So there would be two, two staff on, 2.5 staff on at all times. Very often with commissioned um, packages, we will have individuals that are placed with us that will have some one to one hours in addition to what we provide in the core. Councillor Jones, you've got another question. Yes. Sorry, Chair. Um, it's in relation to the number of uh, individuals who will be there. Because, Craig, you did say that there would be six for six people. Seven bedrooms. Seven bedrooms, Seven bedrooms but you, you did say six. It was it's, currently, it's currently a six bedroom property. Right. But the number of individuals, and perhaps I mistook what you said, mm. we're still talking about seven. Seven, yeah. Right. Um, going back to the, 
the, the, the, the car park in and it is a question for the applicant. It's been mentioned in there and on, on, the, um, on the screen that there would be six spaces there. But when you saw the um, example of how it would be, it's really four spaces. Because if you put six cars uh, there and somebody's in the bottom car there, and one needs to get out sometimes perhaps urgently, number of cars would have to move. So Frank, and it does say somewhere in this report, they talk about six spaces, and then they talk about four spaces. So in my book, it is four spaces, and I'm asking the applicant, um, do you, because you'll have at least three staff there in the daytime. Um, so that's, in, in my book, it'll be one, because Otherwise, you'd be moving cars around all the time, day in, day out. So do you accept that there'll be three, three staff, in my book, out of four spaces, and then there'll only be one space for the visitor? Again, that's something that I couldn't guarantee what we find um, in our experience of, of these planning applications is we end up recruiting local staff and they're able to walk to work. So parking isn't that issue. Um, other staff will walk to work, cycle to work, or get public transport into work. Um, so I, I've just spoken to Matt briefly, and he's confirmed that all of the parking bays are to the regulatory size. Um, and I would also... Um, Well, yeah, I, I think that in, in terms of the staff shifts, they, they would be on a 12 hour shift. So once park, cars are parked up, they would be parked up for the day because there would be a house vehicle that would do the the coming in and out. And that vehicle would be used and the, the staff cars would remain static throughout their 12 hour shift. Any other questions? Uh, before we go on to uh, the sort of the regular questions and comments from committee members, I can just sort of come back on, on a few of the issues that were raised there. Um, I just need to reiterate that again, planning cannot control the individuals that will be living and using this property. All we can do is assess the impact and potential impact of that use. Um, I want to highlight that the photos in the presentation are an accurate representation of what the highway is like in that location. I appreciate Mr. Mr. Snay's concerns in terms of you'd be sat at a lower level if you're in the car, but for the purposes of the committee, it, it's clearly shown what the highway is like in that area. Um, and just yeah, clarifying the issue, I think the applicant raised there in, in terms of the parking spaces, uh, the, the drive itself, once the raised bed has been cleared, will be over eight metres wide. So we'll be able to accommodate three spaces of at least 2.4 metres. And from the front boundary, to the front of the property itself is nearly 20 metres, so there would be sufficient room to accommodate at least two cars deep. Yeah, that's everything. Yeah. Um, and I'll take questions from the committee. Who's as to where we are with the uh, request for a site visit? Is this the time to do it? Right, you've heard it, but I'll repeat it again. Um, the constitution of uh, the, the uh, planning side of things has been changed. And it says a site visit may be held if the director of neighbourhood services in consultation with the chair of the relevant committee considers it will assist members in reaching their decision. Um, so, what we've done in the past, in the planning committee, uh, if a member for that board has moved a site visit, not always, but most of the time, the site visit has been granted. Now that's been changed, and the director of uh, neighbourhood service, whoever it is, is the judge, jury, and execu executioner as far as site visits are concerned. That is a fact. Um, so, 
in view of what has been said and the representations made by uh, Mr. Smith there on behalf of uh, at least 11 objectors there, um, I'm still requesting that there would be a, should be a site meeting at the Jays 8A, The Grove, and I move accordingly. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, consideration has been given to that request on this occasion. Um, I don't consider that it would, it would assist members in reaching their decision to have a site visit. The reason for that is the information um, in front of you is sufficient to make that decision. Photographs have been shown of the site um, as part of the presentation and also the information contained in the report, which obviously includes the um, consideration by the Highways and Engineering Manager um, their view um, is that there's no objection and uh, comments have been included in the report. I have discussed that with the chair of the committee who is in agreement with my decision. Obviously, I disagree with that totally um, because site visits are of benefit and I think they will be in this, in this particular case, um, because I would be insisting that a highways uh, engineer is there together with the representative from Accomplish. Um, and if that doesn't happen, um, you know, members won't be able to see the situation that happens there daily on a busy road with WR lines on a bus route. Any other questions? There is no, there is nothing within the council's constitution, as you're aware, Councillor Jones, that would enable you to request a site visit. The constitution changed back in July, and it is a matter for the director of neighbourhood services in consultation with the chair of the, of the planning committee to determine whether a site visit should be held. So that opportunity for you to request a site visit does no, no longer exist within the constitution of Merthyr Tidville County Borough Council. I'll go to Declan first before you have any more questions. Well, no, I will no. no. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Chair. It's just clarification. I, I think Craig mentioned it and Councillor Brent Carter asked it as well. It's, it was in regards to the uh, number of staff at, at, the, uh, at, at the, the location. That's dealt with by Care Inspector at Wales, is that right? And they're the ones that would um, uh, decide on, on the number. It just seemed a bit low to yeah, me. So it obviously times. accomplished would sort of obviously um, they would determine how many staff they need on site, but yeah, ultimately everything that they would do would need to comply with Cain Inspector of Wales. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Any further questions? So I'll go on to comments then. I have one comment. No, you're, not, you're, you're not allowed to speak, Mr. Snare. Councillor Michelle Jones. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, Councillor Clive Jones has requested that the application be determined by us as the planning committee to deliberate on the concerns raised by the local residents regarding the impact of the proposal would have on the character of the residential area, parking availability, on street congestion, and highway safety. So, as a planning committee, that is all we are supposed to be deliberating and making judgments on today, as far as I'm aware and reading the report um, and considering the relationship between the proposed development surrounding properties, I think it is acceptable. The proposed development, given the nature of its use, would not be considered out of context with the character of the street scene or residential makeup of the immediate surrounding area, which is what I've quoted from the report. So whereas I do sympathise with residents in regards to 
potential residents of the Jays. I don't think we're able to give that our consideration. We just have to consider um, what Councillor Jones has asked us, and that's the impact of the proposal on the character, the parking, and the congestion and highway safety. Thank you. Thank you. Clive? Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, if this planet application is approved, it would change the nature of the residential use and would be at odds with the existing housing in the area to the detriment of the character of the area. The de development is contrary to policy SW2 of the Merthyr Tilford County Borough Council's replacement local development plan. The local residents, quite rightly, do not want a business that will be running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, next door to them or even across the road. Furthermore, the Grove is a well sought after accommodation and a number of residents have lived here for many years in peace and quiet. As the Jays is on a steep hill, a bus route and a very busy road with double yellow lines on it, traffic problems and congestion will undoubtedly occur. The development would give rise to an increase in the level of on-street parking and congestion to the detriment of highway safety. The development, therefore, is uh, contrary to policy SW2 of the Merthyr Tilford County Borough Council Replacement Local Development Plan. I could not, under any circumstances, vote for this application. Thank you. Any more comments? Can I get somebody to move the report, please? Thank you, Clive. Any seconder? Yeah, Declan second. Thank you. Can we put this to the vote? We now go on to item seven. It's an information report. Item eight is a delegated report, September, to receive a report from the chief executive. Is it? Oh, sorry, it's an information report. Um, any other business deemed urgent by the chair? I have none. So we now go into closed session, and so I'll need. Go on. Um, yeah, just just for clarification, Chair, um, I've noticed that obviously when we have been um, casting our votes um, this evening, your name has still been popping up. Um, has been part of the committee here. Um, just a highlight of those uh, votes were cast by Councillor Salmon, not yourself. Okay, thank you. So, as I say, we now go on to item 10, which is a closed session, so I'll need section 100. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So it's been proposed and, yeah, take a vote on it. Yeah. Can we take a vote on that, please? And that's passed. Thank you very much. So we go on to licensing um, item 10, Hackney Carriage Vehicle License to re consider a report from Deputy Chief Executive. Simon, you take it?